Welcome to DeFi Chain Demystified, where we dive deeper in some special topics around our project. The goal is to bring answers to some tricky questions and bust some myths. We are Kyrie and Lord Mark, and today's topic is Where does the DUSD discount come from? Fantastic. Well done, well done, Kyrie. Hey, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. So this is a new format, guys, out there. Kugi and me, we tried to demystify a couple of tricky questions here, especially questions where we hear or questions that we hear many times or where we have the feeling that some people just don't get the answers right. We want to help you to guide you a little bit through our project. And today's topic, like Kugi said already, is the DSD discount. And we want to see where does it come from? Good, Kugi. I would say we jump right in. Uh, let's switch to the next screen. Kugi pre prepared a couple of slides and a couple of graphs to make it easier to follow. And yeah, I think we just start, Kugi. Let's get started. Let's get yeah, started. thanks. Um, it's a bit technical um, charts, but I hope everybody will understand um, what I'm talking about. Um, I think the to explain the DUSD discount, first we need to start with how the, the swaps and how composite swaps on the DeFi chain itself work. So I prepared this little little chart where we see um, basically the assets that we have on uh, the DeFi chain DEX. And uh, each of those arrows indicate a pool where we say we can swap stuff. So you can swap DFI to BTC, to ETH, uh, uh, Ethereum, to USD, USDT, to USDC, and so on. And you can swap, since we have the D-token system, DUSD to SBY, Tesla, and that on. And one important thing is that the only connection between those two is the connection between DUSD and DFI. So um, what this means is, even if you put in the light wallet a swap from, for example, USDT to BTC, you don't have a direct connection. Um, so internally, it will always first swap your USDT to DFI and then those DFI to BTC. It's called a composite swap. It happens within one transaction. Um, it's done internally, so you don't feel it, you don't see it, but it's done like that. So it goes through that pool. Mm -hmm. um, also, that means if you do a more complex stuff like buying um, a Tesla with USDT, so a Tesla share, not, not the car, um, you go from USDT to DFI to DUSD to Tesla. Um, so you would go the full route through three um, pairs, which also means you pay fees three times and all that stuff. But also just keep in mind, you always have to go along, along those errors. Um, also, one side note, because I saw that once, um, please, if you want to go, for example, from Tesla to BTC, don't go from Tesla first to USDD and then from USDD to BTC, because it's just one detour where you uh, just take, take time, additional fees and everything. You can, it's better to directly go there because, um, yeah, maybe that, that makes that a bit clearer. Um, generally, um, because of this structure and we are uh, decentralized DEX, um, this is a completely separated market. Um, so there is no outside world directly telling us how DFI BTC or DFI USDT should trade right now and what price should there. So without any, any additional knowledge or any additional effects, we could trade for whatever price in here. That's a completely separate market where the market participants decide the price. So if someone would say, I buy 10 million DFI with USDD, um, this pool would suddenly go spike up to, I don't know, $10. Um, and the other pools are like, yeah, we don't care. And it doesn't matter what the outside world, central exchange, KuCoin, wherever, thinks the DFI prices. So that's important to understand that this is a completely separate market. Um, 
isolated in, in COE in the first, first step, isolated from other things. But, and here comes a big but, <laughs> um, because those are webbed, we have an outside world. And let's add that in here. Um, how how do those um, those assets come onto onto DeFi chain? It's basically Cake. It's wrapping real BTC or real USDT, USDC, and all the others. It's wrapping them from the real chain exchange from the real chain where they are on the Bitcoin chain. Um, so you can go in with BTC from outside, wrap it to DBTC, and then trade it here. This also means that you could Whatever price you have here, you could take the DPTC, go to Cake, unwrap it to go outside, put it on a central exchange. There you trade BTC for DFI, and then you can take this DFI and send it back to the DeFi chain. So if, let's stay with the um, dollar so it's easier. If, for example, um, we trade here on a $3 per DFI, um, but on the central exchange outside, we trade on a $1 per DFI. You would say, I take my DFI from here, wherever you start, you have a closed loop. I take my DFI from here, I sell it for three D uh, USDT. I put it to cake, I unwrap it, I have three USDT moved up outside of the DeFi chain, put it on a central exchange. Here, I take the $3 and buy three DFI because up here, on the sex, we are at $1 per DFI. I buy three DFI, send those three DFI back in. So I started with one DFI in the loop. I came out with three DFI, so I have two DFI profit. And I do this, since it's a closed loop, I can just do this again. This drops the price here, so um, it, it well, reduces the price here and pumps up the price here, so they um, convert to each other. Um, and that's why we, because we have this closed loop, um, we always track basically the central exchange prices or Oracle prices, the, the real outside world prices, track pretty closely with the prices on the DEX because of this closed arbitrage loop. Where you can, it can also go the other way when we are on a, a cheap on the DEX but expensive on the, sec, uh, on the central exchange, then you go the other way and, and buy it here, sell it on the SEX and go the route, uh, go the loop. Kugi, question, you can do short question. So this yes. is called arbitrage, right? So we yes. actually use the price difference between different exchanges and try to level out the price over these different exchanges. That's correct. Yes. Okay. It's called arbitrage because arbitrage is basically when you do something risk-free. Mm -hmm. So there is, you already know, and the only risk that an arbitrage trader has in this case is the timing. So the, the perfect arbitrage would be that you say you have already USDT on the central exchange, you have already the DFI here. You trade the, the same time when you trade it um, DFI to USDT here, you trade it, you buy the DFI here. So you know you got that price and then you just need the time to send it up here and send the result back. Um, in reality, the if you don't have that, you need to wait until Cake unwraps it and sends it up or until this X sends it to the um, DeFi chain. So that's the only risk you have in such a trade that you miss the price because of time issues on the, on the chain that you don't get fast enough to the central exchange. Otherwise, you have no risk. That's why, why a lot of people do that if you can do it. Um, and that's why it's always happening. And that's why the prices are tracked so closely. Perfect. Because as soon as there is a difference, more than a few percent, that's the fees, or a few uh, zero point something percent, which is the fees, um, then the price is arbitraged out and uh, we have the, the close tracking. Of the price. Okay, fantastic. Exactly. So that also explains for the people who are not so deep into the system, why, for example, Bitcoin price is more or less on all exchanges in the world, more or less the same price, because people don't do this only on DeFi chain, they do this with every other asset out there that is tradable on different exchanges, I think so, right? Exactly. That's, okay. that's what you see on all exchanges. If one exchange has a pump, it gets basically arbitraged out. You hear that a lot from people talking in the space when you say there is one, I don't know, a big buyer on Coinbase mm -hmm. and that gets arbitraged out to the other exchanges. That's exactly that, that people sell it on the one exchange, buy it on the other exchange and then it's, it's arbitraged. Fantastic. Out. Okay, cool.
So um, now this is this loop that that's what we have closed here. And now the important thing is we don't have that with DUSD. Mm -hmm. There is only one connection from DUSD to DFI and there is no DUSD outside. So you can say I sell DFI for DUSD, send the DUSD somewhere and get the outside price of, of DFI and then send it back. You don't have this loop. So um, let's add another thing. Um, how does the discount really happen? Because that was just basically how prices change. But um, if people see a discount in DUSD, um, there is no trading pair between DUSD and USD, D or USDC. So the discount is basically calculated. It's just a calculated number where we say, okay, because of this arbitrage, we have, for example, $2 per DFI on the, on the DEX, um, also $2 on the SEX because that's arbitrage. But this price, for whatever reason, this pool stays at 2.2. .2. And now we don't have arbitrage. So this is not fastly um, averaging out or arbitraged out or whatever, because we would need a lot of people to sell DFI to DUSD so that this price goes down. But until that happens, people say, ah, if I want to go from DUSD to USDD, I need to go that route. So I compare those two prices or those two prices and therefore get a one DUSD is 90 cent in real dollars. And that means I have a discount. So that's actually not that much of a, a statement for DUSD itself, but it's more like a, how is this DFI price compared to this DFI price? Um, and that's how the, the discount, where the, uh, how the discount is calculated, where it comes from basically, and what, what is happening. Here. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's all there is to say about this. Okay, so that means, people... that means short question. So we have we have this pool, right? We have this DEX pool where we have on one side one coin is DFI, I want to, and on the other side we have DUSD. That means if there are too many DUSD in this pool, the price seems, the DUSD price seems too low or is too low compared because on the other side are too many or too little DFI in that case, right? other way around the price is too high okay so right now if if you that, that that that's maybe one one important thing the price on it on a dex pool on a with an automated market maker the price is determined by the ratio between the dfi in the pool and the dusd in the pool because this ratio always defines what's the current price so if you want to move the price on a, on on our dex you need to put in DFI, take out DUSD, for example, then you got the ratio, you change the ratio, more DFI, less DUSD. So the price goes down um, because you have a lot of DFI for few DUSD. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of DUSD, for example, you have 10 million DUSD for 1 million DFI means one DFI is worth 10 DUSD okay. because you have more DUSD. So that, and I, that's I, what, what's happening here. That, 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 that's, that's right. Uh, important to remember, right? That it really depends how much of one coin people swap in and out and that the price is then just calculated out of this formula, the ratio between these two pairs. It's like a scale, right? On one side, you have a lot. On one side, you have little. And that impacts, of course, the value of the other side. Okay, exactly. cool. And that's also um, important that the price on the DEX only moves if you send, if you swap. Mm, okay. On a central exchange, if people stop selling and they just remove their limit orders and one small person, one, one small order gets through, it might spike up. This never happens on the DEX with an automated market maker because you always have the liquidity, you always have the stuff and it's always just the ratio in the pool. Um, and that's also this when we say, OK, um, the current discount is happening because we have too much DUSD in the system. Um, that means it's in the case that if we have too much DUSD on this side compared to the DFI we have on this side means, as we said, the 
DUS, the DFI price in DUSD is up because it's so much DUSD compared to not that many uh, DFI. So this price is up. And as you see, then this price, the, the uh, DUSD for DFI price is, is higher and therefore we get the discount. So if we have more DUSD on this side, this also means that there's probably more DUSD in this pool than there should be. And therefore, um, having this ratio kind of imbalance with the ratio that we have here. Um, and so do we yeah. know why we have more DUSD in this pool? Is this something that you want to talk later or is this the right question at this point? Where do this um, DUSD come from? Why are they now there and why they haven't been there before? They, they have always been there. Mm -hmm. um, or have always been. I mean, there, there's one one important thing. Um, how? <laughs> let's maybe not dive too deep into that because otherwise we go uh, over our time limit. But um, DUSD are created either by a loan. Someone takes a loan in DUSD, uh, therefore mints DUSD, and they are created. Or now we have um, because back then we had not enough DUSD created from loans. So we had very few DUSD on this side, um, more than less than we needed. So this price was down lower than the other side because the other side went up. Everybody wanted DFI um, and wanted to go in. So there was not that not enough DUSD. This price was lower, so we were in a premium. That's why we created this um, DFI payback that you say you can create DUSD easily in a loop, create it. Paid back with DFI, created paid back with DFI. So we had, a, now we have a lot of algorithmic, create, algorithmically created DUSD in the pool or in the, in the whole system. Mm -hmm. So they are there. Um, it's just that when we have a lot of DUSD here and the DFI price is high, it means this is balanced because when we now say, yeah, we have 10 million DFI in this, on this side of the pool and we have 50 million and the USD on this side of the pool. If this price is also $5 per DFI, it matches because 10 to 50 is a, a price of five mm -hmm. per DFI. If now this price drops um, it, and no one sells the DFI for the USD, this price won't drop because this pool just stays and this pool is pretty big. So it's slow to react because we have a lot of liquidity there. So we need a lot of volume to move that pool. Mm -hmm. So the DUSD stay on this side. They are there. Um, this side, the price drops and suddenly this imbalance gets bigger and bigger um, because people say like, I don't care. I don't want to sell my DFI for the USD right now at that price. Um, so this price doesn't move. Okay. And maybe um, for that, we move to the chart because that's, whoop, I prepared something. Fantastic. Copped the models profile. Do you see that? Um, let's write one more. So, Perfect, yeah. Uh, I think that's now the, so we, we, we now know um, how the DUSD discount is calculated, how this is happening, um, uh, comparison of the pools. Now, how did it, where did it come from? How did it get so bad? Say it this way. Um, it's, we, in this chart, we have, um, first the, the DUSD DFI chart. So how the DUSD DFI price, so the, the ratio between the, the assets behaved over time and the USD DFI price. And you see here, the blue line is, it's the Oracle price of DFI, but it's basically, as we said before, tracking this line. So it's just a comparison that we see it on the side. And now if you look at that, um, you see, we, we, we've been in a small discount in the weeks before, um, but even if you assume here we were pretty close to, um, to, uh, uh, to the pack uh, because those prices were the same, so the, the DUSD pack is the same. Now the whole market dropped. You, we have this in the USD DFI price, the whole market dropped like crazy. Um, and you see first when it dropped, the DUSD DFI price also dropped. Um, Mainly, I guess, and that's, that's a bit of a guess, but an educated guess, um, because the FI price dropped, the collateral price dropped, um, or collateral value dropped. So a lot of people were forced to get out of their loans, get out of their, um, leveraged DFI positions. Um, so they, they took the DFI, sold it for the USD, um, and therefore this pool also moved. But then we have the situation where the 
market dropped further, but at around 150, um, people said within the system, I don't want to sell my DFI for the USD at that price. I don't have any intention to do that. And on the other hand, other people came in and said, I have a lot of DUSD because we have a lot of DUSD in the system. Um, let's buy the dip. And we see that ongoing the whole time that people actively buy the dip with their DUSD. They buy DFI. And that means even though we had volume here, um, so there was trading, I mean, it, it went down it, while we had a flat, the price didn't move because some bought, some sell, sold. So it's basically averaging out. And that's why this price stayed. So it was not that much about I buy the USD at a discount. I mean, also happened that people bought the USD as a discount and directly moved through the, those pools. But it's just that this pool decided we don't go further down. We buy the DFI, we buy the dip. So that, so means, that means the good intent of people about buying DFI with the DUSD made the discount worse. Is this, do I yes. understand it correct? So people said yes. it's cheap for that price, I'm gonna buy more DFI. And that actually didn't stabilize, this destabilized the system actually. It actually, um, yeah, it, it, it helped destabilizing it. Um, okay, yeah. And because mm -hmm. the, the DFI, the, the Oracle price dropped further and further, and then you see, it dropped down and then the market kind of slowed down. You see that it, the DF, I mean, what's, what's really, really interesting is here that the DFI DUSD price starts to move completely different mm -hmm. on a short term than the, the real price. Also, as soon as we saw this small, yeah, relief rally, <laughs> this mm -hmm. small bounce where everybody was like, Ooh, um, this is the bottom. <laughs> um, I buy DFI with my DUSD and the DUSD DFI price moved up. Um, so no one, yeah, it, it was just a small, small bump, but, um, the, the discount didn't get better because mm -hmm. if you, um, just to have this, um, visualized, that's basically how this discount came into life that you say, okay, the center exchange price dropped further. The DUSD price stayed flat, so we had the discount. And now, of course, many people bought the discount in the USD, went into the USD, and as soon as the discount uh, reduces, as soon as it gets smaller, they swap back. Makes perfect sense, but that also leads to a, um, pressure on the on, on the on the USD DFI price because as soon as someone says. I'm now closing, I'm going from DUSD to DFI, uh, to USDD. Um, they buy here and sell here. So this, this spread gets, gets bigger. And that's why we have a pretty constant, um, discount now, even though when we go down, it's not that, not that much changing. And if you go up, also it's not changing because DUSD DFI is, yeah tracking the real price just with a, with a gap. Um, and that's how, how this whole thing came into life. So, um, that's why also this, the ideas of saying, yeah, let's, let's take DFI and sell DFI for DUSD, um, would mean that we sell this, drop this down. But this also means that people, all the people who are in this trade now would take the opportunity to say, ah, I made a 10% profit now with the, with the arbitrage. Um, I sell my, I buy, I buy my, um, with my DUSD, my DFI, get this price back up, sell it here, drop this price down. Now suddenly this price goes further down here. The people are like, let's buy the dip, <laughs> buy more dips. <laughs> and this price stays flat as we had it here where we said, okay, we came the discount nearly closed for a short term. If we stayed here, it might have been that we stayed on a perfectly stable pack, but price dropped further, DFI, DUSD didn't, and therefore um, we had the discount. So I think that's 
That's the story of how the DSD discount came to life. So, so buying the dip was not really helpful, but we fully understand that people buy the dip. So now it's just about bringing the pack back together. And there are a lot of um, improvement proposals uh, that have been voted on. Quickly, what would happen? Let's say there would be a massive rally now and all the prices, all the all the altcoins also go up again and the FI on the central exchanges would go up again. Would this automatically help us to regain the pack or would we stay at the moment in this pack and both lines would go parallel more or less up? What would happen then? Let's say the price would double or this triple in a short time. First thing, buying the dip is good, mm -hmm. but less with the USD, more with USDD. <laughs> okay. Um, because that's that's exactly what uh, uh, the, the, the second part. Um, if this if this line goes up, if this price goes up, it helps. Um, if it goes up dramatically, the thing is, the USDD DFI pool is far smaller than the DUSD pool. So this price moves far faster and easier than the U DUSD pool. So um, if this line goes up, we would have many people close the arbitrage and therefore the, the discount will close slowly, um, but it will close. Um, so I think if we go up into a level of 180 or something, um, this will basically yeah converge together um, okay. that we are there. So that's, that's also the, the best thing that could happen to us right now. I mean, of course, bumping markets are, are great, um, but that's that's one of the best ways to get out of the, the discount is by closing this gap from from below um, because people will will buy the dip with the USD of course and I understand that I'm, I'm, I also want to but I know yeah maybe not do that right now um, but if they this line gets up this line is the the DUSD DFI line is just slower in reaction because it's a bigger pool um, usually and therefore this will go up slowly this will this goes up fast then we come come together and are back on the back on the back okay i hear i hear people saying and and i i'm not 100 sure what's your take on it people say because prices are down because also the d token so let's say stocks went down that people don't need so many DUSD because they don't have so many D tokens. Is this actually already our next topic or do we still want to cover that in that video? Like does um, a decrease in, 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 in stock markets also put pressure on our DUSD? Because if you don't, if let's say, if your Tesla position is not so big anymore and you want to put in liquidity money, you don't need so many DUSD. Is this true? Is this false? What, what's your yes, take on this? Um, it has an effect, say it this way. It has an effect mm -hmm. um, because the more, if we, if we move back up, um, the more DUSD you have in the system, mm -hmm. the more DUSD is likely to get accumulated in this pool or is moved to DFI. Mm -hmm. Because if we have, if people say, yeah, uh, either we, I was in liquidity mining or anything, or um, because the market dropped, I, I sell my Tesla and move to D tokens uh, or to, to crypto. Um, we get a lot of buy pressure on this side. And that's now why this whole thing is a bit hard to really analyze what's the real cause for the discount. Um, there are some obvious things like it's a big pool and everything. Um, Many people think that, yeah, it's because everybody's leaving the system, um, but we don't see that that much in the, in the total value locked. So um, the, the value in the, in the pools is not dropping that, that much that it would explain that stuff. So it's more like this is really the, um, the slow move of this pool and people buying the dip. Mm -hmm. um, because as soon as someone, so this is affected by people buying the dip, People wanting to get out of the DUSD system, out of the whole system to say, I'm done with stocks, stocks are crazy, I want to go into crypto, either because they don't like stocks or because crypto dropped so hard, so they want to rotate from stocks into crypto, so they go all go this direction. Or because they say, I have so much DUSD that I don't need right now, because 
that side went down, I don't need mm -hmm. that in liquidity mining or whatever. Um, so I move out. I mean, the thing is, if you've been in liquidity mining from the beginning, you don't have excess DUSD. That's maybe a misunderstanding because if I, if I am in the Tesla DUSD liquidity pool um, and the Tesla um, price drops, I don't have more DUSD now outside. Everything is in the pool. Um, so the ratio in the pool shifts. I have less DUSD in the pool and more Tesla um, tokens in the pool for, that belong to me. But it's not that I need less DUSD now and therefore have excess DUSD. It's just if I sell the if I have Tesla and I sell them and that's so that's that wouldn't affect that that much. But there are a lot of DUSD in the system, and if there are a lot of DUSD in the system, means we have a lot of value here. We have less value here, so the value wants to move probably, and this move affects this this price by pumping it up, and that affects the discount. Cool. Good. I think that sums it up. Something else to add? Otherwise, I would say we finish the topic off and then jump into the next topic. What do you think? Are we good? Okay. I'm good. Good. Fantastic. Thanks, Kriegi. So, so much about where does the DUSD discount come from. And in episode two, you're going to hear how does the DUSD discount going to affect the D token system. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.